Good evening everybody, it's Glenn Cordwell. I just wanted to go into more detail about Hill 60 and other things I've been seeing throughout the nearby areas um, and I have a lot of questions. I have more questions than answers. This is the top view of the um, Port Kembla Five Islands area. Uh, essentially this was both all one landmass. Um, this Hill 60 is uh, very well known for a military base. Um, there's bunkers all around it um, where they use to defend against the threat from the Japanese. Uh, so that is definitely uh, a big part of it and there's sewage works as well. And you have all this um, reddish rock all around which I'll take sh closer looks later. Um, okay, so the wider area, give you an idea, that's uh, that's Port, the Port Kembla um, uh, processing district still works and that kind of thing. And there's smelt smelting. Uh, there's uh, that's Wollongong. Further down is Lake Illawarra, uh, which had to be dredged some time ago. Here is the access point to the ocean, which had to be drenched again. And what's more exciting is a place called Windang Island, which is actually not an island, but it is. And that there is an isthmus, if that's how you pronounce it. Um, very interesting history. Okay, so I've got some videos to show you related to the sluice mining. Okay, this is Hill, This is the other side of Hill 60. Then the sewage plants on the south side here is This is on the what do you call it, east, east side of the, the, of the peninsula next to the sewage plants. Here is clearly a, a structure as part of an old rock pool. This is clearly cut in fairly recent times. And there's another wall on that side that's been destroyed. So this is where's this in the history books? Just need to figure that out. Um, maybe if you walk over here, yeah, a couple blocks by the looks of it. This is this is this is clearly a wall that's been torn down, and then and obviously could have gone as high as like several feet. But I don't know if this was used as a rock pool. Look at these straight lines again. So they do go, they could be naturally formed by the or cuts or they seem to be cut fairly cleanly and then over here we'll see if there's any block work, uncertain because of so much erosion. Well what do you do? There you go. Okay and here we are again at another part of it. Are these natural? Are these recently cut? You know, it's colonial times. But it's just whenever I see things that like at odd angles where they where the lines intersect as a T section, like a letter T, where, they, where it's not necessarily what you would expect if things were caused by oceans and things were caused by you know, natural ruptures. There's such a squaring to it. Case studies. It's going to take ages to figure this thing out, but a geologist should at least give me a leg up. Keeps happening. Apparently, it's, as Carlos says, this is apparently the C4 turned on its side. It was, it was, it was, it was basically fallen over, and that's what we're seeing is the side of the levels. But I'm not too sure. I don't think so. It just seems too constructed, not constructed, but kind of formed. But that that looks like to me is I don't know. Okay, so this, these are bubbles that are created in the stone. Could be lava, as we say, as we discussed. There's up to some friends here. But there's a lot of all these 
bubbles could be part of some kind of process. Okay, so here is the edge of a cut. Obviously they're cutting out rocks. This is the this is what it's all about. So all these lines everywhere uh, are cuts or cracks or however they cut it out. It's not machine cut obviously like we would know. It's obviously cut out a different way. I'm not sure if this is slag in the first place or but they obviously cut it out and then fracture it out I guess. You can see here where it would have been just like you know, wedging it out and cutting it out that way. So all the cuts at the top are probably a result of perhaps the cuts above it. So you know, cuts these cuts seem to go through quite deep. I'm going to take it out. Use it for blocks somewhere. All right. This is the furthest, uh, furthest part around Hill 60. Uh, as you can see, these two long channels are cut out. They're clearly the two of them. One, one right here, and one just on the other side there. And if you were to extrapolate that central rock further out, you'll probably go quite out. But this looks like a long section. I don't know how they would have used it back in the past. I mean, and there's a rock, apparently there's a rock pool over there somewhere. I just can't be bothered at, at this stage today. Another theory that I have, because, I mean, are these natural fissures? I mean, there's, some of these are straight. And there's all sorts of shapes and they don't follow like yeah, some of these lines go all the way. Way over there. Look at it, lines everywhere. Clearly cut out the blocks. Another really interesting theory about polygonal construction, and why it's so accurate, is people say, Oh yeah, yeah, they um you know it's geopolymer. Yeah, sure, it probably is. And they fit so tightly. Yep, I believe that. How do they do it? Well this is all polygonal. Look at it. Polygonal. So if you cut from a flat slab, whether it's slab scan, just dry yeah, slag, or whether it's it's not dry as hard, I don't know how you cut something this hard. But if you if you just simply do it polygonal style, inevitably when you um, set it upright, it's already stronger because you've already created a polygonal template. Some of these things don't, some of these lines don't make any sense. I will speak to a geologist and try to get their opinion before I start flouting the theories. Well, where did these stones go? It's a sluice mine in, in operation somewhere, it's more basic. Uh, this is by a channel called Gold Hog. Um, I look anyway, they are showing how basic sluice operations and channels and everything comes down into tiers. So they generally have to use mats to create this, this step thick, um, path where, in a way, it allows heavy metals to sediment themselves on certain points as the water rushes down. It's like they get caught by their own weight, and that's why they've got to fall down. They sometimes see they've got little ridges there just to catch some of these things. So that's a sluice mine in operation. Um, so this is from Wollongong City Libraries, um, just a bit of information which covers, of course, the traditional custodians of the land, uh, uh, referencing the Darawarp language and associated peoples. The, um, the industry part of it is what I'm looking at. Uh, there's always, there's always been, there's been industry here from 1876. There's been coal, but there's been a lot of copper smelting. And once again, um, as I've done in previous videos, uh, it mentions 
the Hill 60, and I've done this in a couple of previous videos, where the uh, indigenous people uh, were always fishing until World War II, when the place was converted as a military uh, lookout. So, so yeah, so they're fishing up to the 1940s, and uh, that, that it's a significant site. Um, and as far as the industry goes, there's there's interesting stuff referencing copper smelting and in, in this particular article I I've read it somewhere else it's not here but um, Quarry Street in Port Kemmler had a, had a, had a uh, the electrolyte refining and smelting company according to this it takes copper from uh, it took copper from Queensland but uh, I read somewhere that was taking it from Tasmania now just an interesting point on Tasmania The, if you look on, on mineral mineralogy maps and where copper is, there is a lot. There's copper deposits around here in this region. Okay, important to know that because going deeper, and you'll need to look. And this has come up on the sites before, but there's a there is a place called the Macquarie Harbour Historic Site. Okay, if you look at that up online, you'll find very what's apparently convict ruins, but they're pretty complicated con uh, convict ruins. Okay, so and so if you look that up on that online, you'll find that it is quite an interesting uh, set of ruins. Uh, well cut stone. It's not something you'd expect from a, a what, what is considered to be the harshest penal settlement penal colonies of all, uh, so it's notorious, um, happens to be close to these copper mines. Um, so, and this is of course, as I said in previous videos, we're getting into the taboo area where in all the maps, um, this whole part of Australia is always left off the map. So roughly from about, uh, if you look at all the maps up to A1790 something, this whole area is one straight line going down to here and here as well. So these areas are, are taboo. If you're, you you wouldn't be allowed to get through here, I guess. And you certainly didn't want the the information on any maps. Okay. So what do I think? In what I think, in summary, is that. You can't escape the fact that uh, Windang and Windang Island and Hill 60 don't have substantial his historical references. Um, Windang Island, there's talk of, if you look at the history of Windang Island specifically, uh, there is reference to a company in the late 19th century putting some money down to, to um, to dredge out land and they stop. Now look, that, that, all these ideas are, uh, uh, are okay, but this is flat. I mean, when I was there on the day, it is, it is absolutely flat. It's almost like the top of an aircraft carrier. It's like you could land something on it. I mean, it's, it is like, it's, it, I, I can, you know, sea erosion would do all these things around the tops here, but this is amazing. And so, this is where I think, I think I have a theory and I'll put this forward in the next video as to where I think this is going. And I'm moving away from the Dutch idea. Uh, and I think I know what it is. So I look forward to doing another video soon and thanks very much.